food. We all love it. And often a little too much. Why wouldn't we? It's delicious. Unfortunately, the way we interact with it is often the source of a lot of health and environmental issues. You see, people love food so much that they unconsciously ingest calories with our choices being wildly out of balance for what our bodies and environment actually need. What follows are stories about four people. Derek, Tanner, Marin, Leslie. Changing the way they interact with food to become more conscientious about how they consume and documenting it by becoming a blogger. Let's take a look at how these four are sharing their ingestion introspections. First, Derek. He loves food, especially when his wife is cooking for him. But she's traveling right now, and now Derek must learn to cook for himself. Amidst all the excitement about moving to a new country, food doesn't seem to crop up as an issue. And being non-vegetarian myself, it seems like a slam dunk. I thought adapting to American and international food would be easy. So it's not long before you start missing your own local food. But someone's got to cook it, right? That someone's me. And especially if you haven't done it before, it's quite an adventure. I started with scouting recipes online. I called my wife, okay, called my mom. I started this blog really with the intention of humoring myself. And as it got going, it turned out to be quite encouraging a medium. It feels great when someone writes back to you and offers tips, comments, solutions, even from even people who you don't know. I got a comment from someone who said, hey, why don't you try this this way? You know, you might enjoy it more. Now I'm trying to take this blog even outside my circle of friends. People really comment on how good the food looks. In fact, one of my followers even tried out one of my dishes. Now, I wasn't expecting that. Maybe because it looked really tasty. It looks like Derek's penchant for peckishness is easily remedied. But what if he added a dietary restriction to the mix? So I've lived my entire life eating gluten-free foods. Uh, you know, it used to be pretty hard, especially as a kid, there just weren't that many options in restaurants or in grocery stores. So I didn't get to eat any, a lot of those fun foods, you know, like cookies and uh, cakes and you know, hot dogs on a bun. But I managed, you know, I became quite the rice cake connoisseur. There was, you know, cheese on rice cake, peanut butter and jelly on a rice cake. And if I went to a birthday party, I'd take a frosting and put that on a rice cake. Over the years, as gluten intolerance has uh, increased in awareness, uh, I've seen a lot of new products come to the market. Now with all these great gluten-free options out there, I can eat bread and uh, order beers and pizzas at restaurants. It's a great time to be gluten-free. The only hard part now is knowing where to go to find these gluten-free foods and if they're any good and really if they're worth their high prices. So to find the answers to those questions, I decided to start a blog and venture around the Seattle area finding some of the best gluten-free foods out there and writing reviews about them. So far, the blogging has been a great learning experience. It seems like these days, almost everyone has a friend that they know that has to eat gluten-free foods. There's quite a community out there. All I had to do was find them. I looked on other gluten-free blogs, on Twitter, on Meetup, and I used that to narrow my focus and build my network. Now I'm sharing my ideas about where to eat in the Seattle area, and I'm also getting some great feedback and encouragement from people that are following my blog. Seattle is an awesome place for food, even if you have allergies like our friend Tanner. But what if all the options meant that you were occasionally inclined to over-imbibe? Years ago, I learned that I was gluten and dairy intolerant. So what did I do with that? I decided to ignore it. Who wants to have to deal with all that? Finally, I got sick so often in so many inconvenient situations that I decided to give it a shot. But how am I supposed to do that, right? Like gluten and dairy and everything. So I decided to start a blog. That would keep me honest. Now, one would think that if you took gluten and dairy out of your diet, you would automatically lose weight. Au contraire, mon frere. Since I lost my beloved cheese and donuts, I replaced it with rice and sugar, and I gained a good amount of weight. Now this shifted my blog. 
And with the addition of the weight loss, I started reaching out past my friends and into all of these different communities of people that are also interested in weight loss, in cooking, in food, in allergies. And it gave me a much larger community to work with. Now I'm working on losing weight and staying gluten and dairy free. And my blog is keeping me honest, so that's been helping a lot. And I've already lost five pounds. It sounds like Marin has finally learned to tackle her vicious vittles and is moving toward a happy, healthy weight. But what if our food supply became limited? The purpose of my blog is to share another way to think about food. I don't have allergies and I've been cooking since I could reach the stove, so my blog is more about a balanced food supply. I've been experimenting with the culinary arts for about 30 years, but for the last 10, I've been really interested in growing and preserving my own food. A few years back, I realized there weren't very many bees or other pollinators floating around my garden. At first, I chalked it up to my little killers, but then I learned about the bee shortage. Over the years, I've learned a few ways to make my yard more hospitable for the bees, and I wanted to share the things that I've discovered, ranging from gardening to grocery shopping that everyone can do, simple steps, in order to help nurture the bee. While working on my blog, I realized that I've been overthinking my posts and things don't need to be perfect. So I just started writing without overthinking word choice and style. But the one thing I stuck true to is keeping my categories tight. All of my posts fall into a short list of categories, and by doing this, it ensures that the right sidebar of Honey Bee Love is a useful navigation tool, and it also makes sure that I stay true to my blog's original intent. In the past, issues like food sensitivities, allergies, and weight loss were kept pretty private. Now, we've got blogs, cheap and easy to use communication tools that help us to build communities and support systems. These four are no longer passive consumers, so why would they be passive communicators? Derek, Tanner, Marin, and Leslie all had goals in mind when they started their blogs, but as they got going, their experiences made them rethink their strategy. Let's see what they've learned. Compelling images strengthen your story matter. Focus on trending topics. Find groups or individuals that will benefit from your content. Categorize your stories for interested readers to easily find what they're looking for. Link and get linked with like-minded bloggers. Consistent and regular posts. The end, but not of a gluten-free cracker.